Google will invest over 33,737 crore rupees for a 7.7% stake in Jio platforms. Reliance Industries Chairman Mukesh Ambani announced at the company's annual general meeting on Wednesday. This takes the cumulative fundraising by Reliance in less than three months to 2.13 lakh crore rupees, which is in excess of the company's net debt of 1.61 lakh crore rupees at the end of financial year 2020. Dear share owners, in last year's AGM speech, I had shared my goals of growing our business through partnership and achieving a net debt-free balance sheet. I am happy to report that we have fulfilled this promise well ahead of the timelines we had set for ourselves. In a short span of few months, we have raised a record amount of capital and forged several new strategic partnerships. We completed India's largest ever 53,124 crore rights issue. This was also the world's largest right issue by a non-financial institution in a decade. Speaking at the company's annual general meeting, RIL Chairman Mukesh Ambani confirmed that Jio and Google will collaborate to make a high-quality, low-cost 4G smartphone. They should not be deprived of the benefits that digital and the data revolution offer. Chip is determined to make India 2G Mukt. Ambani said Reliance has sold over 100 million Jio phones till date, but there are many feature phone users waiting to upgrade to a conventional smartphone. He added that Reliance can fill that gap by designing an entry-level 4G or even a 5G smartphone at a fraction of the current cost. The smartphone that will be built jointly by Google and Jio will run on the Android operating system. Today, people in India no longer have to wait for technology to come to you. A whole new generation of technologies are happening here first. At the same time, smartphones and affordable data have made it possible for a billion Indians to come online. Reliance, and Geo in particular, deserves a good deal of credit for this progress. But there is more work to do to connect every Indian to the opportunities that technology creates. This goal is especially important at a time of enormous challenge for India and the world. I've never been more hopeful about India's future. It's a future we can help shape by partnering together. So let me show you our latest innovation, the Geo Glass. India's most valued private company, Reliance Industries, has launched the Geo Glass during its 43rd annual general meeting. The mixed reality headset comes with over 25 built-in applications and allows for normal and holographic video calling for the post-COVID-19 world. The Geo Glass weighs just 75 grams and features personalized audio experience. It can be connected to the smartphone via a simple cable for several use case scenarios. Reliance also said the Geo Glass is designed for teachers and students to enable 3D virtual rooms and conduct holographic classes through Geo Mixed Reality Cloud in real time. In a game changer for India, Reliance Geo unveiled its 5G roadmap at the annual general meeting addressed virtually by RIL Chairman Mukesh Ambani. Setting a precedent for Atmanirbhar Bharat, Ambani said that Jio's 5G solutions are fully made and developed in India and will start operating for consumers in 2021. I believe that the time has come for a truly global digital product and services company to emerge from India and to be counted among the best in the world. Mukesh Ambani said Jio has designed and developed a complete 5G solution from scratch. The Made in India technology can be deployed and launched in a year's time once Spectrum is available. He added that Jio can easily upgrade its 4G network to 5G. And finally, once proven in India, Jio platforms would be well positioned to be an exporter of 5G solutions to other telecom operators globally as a complete managed service. Chinese companies such as TikTok owner ByteDance have reportedly been asked to answer 77 questions by the IT ministry, including whether they censored content, worked on behalf of foreign governments or lobbied influencers. 
According to news agency Reuters, the owners of banned apps have been given three weeks' time to respond to the questionnaire. Earlier, the government had banned 59 Chinese apps, including TikTok and UC Browser, after 20 Indian soldiers were killed by Chinese troops across the border in eastern Ladakh. A European Union court on Wednesday ruled in favour of technology giant Apple and Ireland in its dispute with the EU over $15 billion, that is roughly 1.11 lakh crore rupees, in back taxes. The Luxembourg-based court said that Apple does not need to pay the money called by the EU Commission. The European Union Commission had claimed that Apple had an illegal sweetheart tax deal with Irish authorities. Even though taxation remains under the authority of its member countries, the EU is seeking to create a level playing field among the 27 nations by making sure special deals including ultra-low tax rates with foreign companies like the one between Ireland and Apple are weeded out. The Trump administration has said that the EU is unduly targeting US companies. The ruling comes at a time when tax income for EU nation is especially welcomed because of the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. According to Sensor Tower, Apple has removed more than 2,500 mobile games from its China App Store in the first week of July. This is four times as many as in the same period in June and comes after the publishers failed to submit a government-issued license number to Apple that allows them to offer in-app purchases. Notable games removed from China's App Store in July so far include Supercell's farming hit Heyday and non-stop Chuck Norris. Chinese smartphone maker Oppo has unveiled its 125 watt flash charge technology that it claims to fully charge a 4000 mAh battery in 20 minutes and up to 41% in 5 minutes. Oppo says the phone uses double 6C cells with breakthrough battery ratio, while the charger benefits from improved power density and uses USB C at both ends of the cable. The company claims to have developed the fastest wireless charging system as well. Its new 65 watt Airhook tech can wirelessly charge a 4000 mAh battery in 30 minutes, which is even faster than any currently available wired solution. Oppo also announced a couple of compact adapters a 50 watt mini SuperVOOC charger and a 110 watt mini flash charger. Lenovo has teased that its upcoming gaming smartphone will come with a 144Hz refresh rate. The settings page also mentions Snapdragon 865 chipset paired with 6GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 128GB of UFS 3.0 storage. There will be a 5000mAh battery with support for 90W fast charging. Other specs include dual speakers with 65mm drivers, U-Engine with dual linear motors for haptic feedback and a faster 270Hz touch sampling rate. The Lenovo Legion is set for a July 22nd launch in China. Samsung Galaxy M31s, the successor to the popular Galaxy M31 smartphone, is tipped to launch in India later this month for about 20,000 rupees. News agency INS reported that the Korean tech giant's next mid-ranger will come with its proprietary Super AMOLED Infinity O display. Other specifications include a 6000 mAh battery and 64 megapixel quad rear camera setup. The Galaxy M31s was spotted on benchmarking website Geekbench last month with an Exynos 9611 SoC and 6GB of RAM. WhatsApp was briefly down in the V hours of July 15th with users unable to send or receive messages on the Facebook-owned end-to-end encryption messaging app. The service is now back up and is working fine globally. According to Down Detector, the outage began at about 1.30 am Indian Standard Time and affected users all over the world including in India. Most people reported that they weren't able to connect to WhatsApp with some claiming login issues. Although there's no confirmation from the messaging app, WhatsApp Beta Info said that it was because WhatsApp server was down. 